The key word in Proverbs is wisdom, and as it's written in the last verse of Revelation 13, here is wisdom, let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, not a human being, but Satan himself, who's also called a man in Isaiah 14, Ezekiel 28, and 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, that man of sin, the son of perdition, and his number is 603 score and 6, that's 666, which is when Satan appears as Antichrist, the king king of fierce countenance as he's called in Daniel chapter 8 verse 23 and he'll appear in Jerusalem claiming to be Christ returned at the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet and the sixth vial and if you don't have the wisdom and understanding to realize that before the true Christ returns Satan will appear as the fake Christ you will be deceived into receiving the mark of the beast in your forehead where your mind is so with that having been said Proverbs chapter 21 with a word of wisdom from our father in the name of the Lord Lord Jesus Christ. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. And as you can see in your companion Bible, it says see note on rivers in Psalm 1 verse 3. And as you can see, rivers means divisions irrigating a garden. And if we were to look at this first verse of Proverbs chapter 21 through the lens of Daniel chapter 11, the actions of the king of the north and the king of the south at this time are going to work toward the formulation of the one world political system no matter what. The waters being symbolic of peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues, and at the woe of the fifth trumpet, the so-called new world order will emerge, and as we know from Daniel chapter 7, it's made up of four parts. Four being the number of earth, with the seven mountains being the seven continents of the globe, and the ten horns, ten fallen angel kings, which are part of Daniel's fourth beast, which is exclusively supernatural. The leopard is the infrastructure of the new world order as it's called the Kenites and their four hidden dynasties, with the bear being symbolic of the non-Christian nations, the Ezekiel 38 confederacy headed by Russia, the fourth and final king of the north, and the lion is symbolic of the Christian nations, the king of the south. And after the new world order receives a deadly wound, the king of Babylon of the end times appears, Satan in his role of Antichrist. And that's when the Christian nations cease to be Christian, because it's at that time they'll begin to worship the devil. And immediately after the tribulation of those days, the true Christ returns at the woe of the seventh trumpet, the true Christ being the tree of life, who is both king of kings and lord of lords. So prophecy is going to come to pass exactly as it's written. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord, as the divisions of water in a garden are in the hand of the gardener. As you can see this verse translated in the companion Bible, he turneth it whithersoever he will. According to his perfect plan of salvation, those who are grafted onto the tree of life, which is God's family tree, and remain in the true Christ will go into the eternity. Those who choose to be part of Satan's family tree will go into the lake of fire unless they repent between now and the end of the millennium. There are two family trees, and you're either part of one family tree or the other. As Christ says in John chapter 15, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman, just as the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord, as the divisions of water in the hand of the gardener. He turneth it whithersoever he will, God's will being that none should perish but all come to repentance, and Christ Jesus, the King, is the only way to the Father. The negative part of God's plan being carried out at this time by the King of the North and the King of the South, not two individuals, but two nations, Russia and the United States at this time, but at the woe of the fifth trumpet, the King of the South will be all the Christian nations, and the King of the North will be all the non-Christian nations, up until the sixth trumpet. It, when most Christians die spiritually and become anti-Christians, that is to say, instead of Christians. So at this time, the Kenites, the he-goat of Daniel chapter 8, play both sides with their four hidden dynasties, leading up to the hour of temptation that begins with the woe of the fifth trumpet, when the he-goat becomes the leopard, when Satan and his angels are cast unto the earth. That's when the so-called new world order emerges, then it's wounded to death, then Satan appears as Antichrist, and then immediately after the tribulation of those days, the day of the Lord begins, the thousand years after which the great white throne judgment transpires, and after that the third world age begins. That's when God's plan of salvation ends and the eternity begins. Verse 2, every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord pondereth the hearts. God weighs and tests the hearts, and when the true Christ returns as King of kings and Lord of lords, in righteousness he will judge in total fairness and equity with the just weight, the 
balances of deceit will be destroyed at the seventh trumpet. After the thousand years are finished, God the Father returns for the great white throne judgment and all who are part of God's family tree go into the eternity, the true promised land. To do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. And as you can see in your companion Bible, justice is righteousness. And again, the true Christ upon his return at the seventh trumpet upon that white horse in righteousness doth judge as it's written in Revelation chapter 19. And high look and a proud heart and the plowing of the wicked is sin. This is the opposite of the plowing we as Christians are to do by planting seeds of truth whereby God willing people can be grafted onto the tree of life. That's the fruit we are to produce as Christians, but the plowing of the wicked is to plant seeds of deception, to cause people to remain in Satan's family tree or to be grafted onto it at the sixth trumpet. Christ is the tree of life, but Satan is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, who received the death sentence in the first world age because of pride within himself. That's why he's called the son of perdition, the son that perishes in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. The thoughts of the diligent tend only to plenteousness. Those who diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord our God are blessed, as we know from Deuteronomy 28. But of everyone that is hasty only to want, those who don't walk accordingly to God's word and don't diligently hearken to his voice, end up on the negative side of Deuteronomy chapter 28, with the curses as opposed to the blessings and are on their way to being deceived into worshiping Satan when he appears as Antichrist at the sixth trumpet. Verse 6, the getting of treasures by a lying tongue is a vanity tossed to and fro of them that seek death. That would be walking according to Satan's ways instead of Christ. And notice in Daniel 8.23, Satan is called a king of fierce countenance when he appears as Antichrist. And going back to the curses of Deuteronomy 28 and verse 50, as you can see, a nation of fierce countenance, and that word nation can even mean a flight of locusts, as you can see in your Strong's Concordance. Satan's angels being the locust army written of in Revelation chapter 9, and as we know from the book of Joel, there are four stages. The gnar, the swarmer, and the devourer in the first half of the hour of temptation, in my opinion, with Satan appearing as Antichrist at the sixth trumpet, the king of fierce countenance written of in Daniel chapter 8 verse 23, and the sixth trumpet is when the fourth and final stage of the locust army begins, the consumer stage. That's when the spiritual death occurs in the Christian nations that make up the lion of Daniel chapter 7 go from being Christian nations to anti-Christian nations because they'll worship Satan instead of Christ at that time. They didn't hearken diligently to God's word, and for that cause, they don't understand the timing of the return of the true Christ, which is why they'll take part in the great apostasy at 666. The robbery of the wicked shall destroy them because they refuse to do judgment. And as you can see in your companion Bible, robbery is rapacity, which means greediness. And if you look up this word on the online etymology dictionary, as you can see, it comes from rapier, which means to seize. The word rapture coming from the medieval Latin raptura, meaning seizure or rape. The rapacity of the wicked shall destroy them because they refuse to do judgment. 1830 being the year the rapture doctrine first began to spread, the first plague written of in Revelation chapter 16 that leads to the spiritual death at the sixth trumpet. The first plague began in 1830 when the vial was poured out, but it doesn't kill until Satan appears in Jerusalem when they receive the mark of the beast and that third die spiritually. And as it's written in Daniel chapter 8 verse 25, by peace he shall destroy many, spiritually speaking. They'll die spiritually whenever they begin to worship the devil instead of Christ. The way of man is froward and strange, which means crooked, but as for the pure, his work is right. Straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, eternal life, that is to say, and few there be that find it, as Christ says in Matthew chapter 7. Right after that, he says, Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. And that word ravening is harpax, which means rapacious, as in the rapacity of the wicked that shall destroy them. Those deceived into thinking Christ will return at any moment are going to worship Satan instead of Christ, the destroyer being another one of Satan's names. If people expect Christ to return at any moment, then they're going to worship the false Christ. It's common sense. God's elect at that time will be delivered up and the Holy Spirit will speak through them. And because of what the Holy Spirit will say, many will come out of the confusion, which is what Babylon means, and they'll be grafted back on to God's family tree, the tree of life. It is better to dwell in the corner of the housetop than with 
a brawling woman in a wide house. In the future, a sense, as Christ says in Mark 13, when you see Satan appear as Antichrist in Jerusalem, the desolator written of in the book of Daniel, let him that is on the housetop not go down into the house, neither enter therein to take anything out of his house. The enemies of a watchman who knows the truth at that time being those of his own house, as it's written in Micah chapter 7 verse 6, that is to say his or her own family members who will think Satan is Jesus returned, so better to watch on the housetop as Christ commanded all of us to do than to waste time with one who rejects the truth of God's word. Plant the one seed. Those who take part in the great apostasy will deliver up their own family members, as we know also from Mark chapter 13, and that's when the Holy Spirit will speak through God's elect, whereby whosoever will can take part in the first resurrection at the seventh trumpet. The soul of the wicked desireth evil, his neighbor findeth no favor in his eyes, which shows a complete disregard for God's commandment to love thy neighbor as thyself. And if we don't hearken diligently to God's voice, which is recorded in his word, we get the curses of Deuteronomy 28, not the blessings. When the scorner is punished, the simple is made wise, and when the wise is instructed, he receiveth knowledge. Ultimately, when the scorner is locked up in the bottomless pit, when the true Christ returns, many of those who were deceived at the sixth trumpet will wise up, choosing to receive instruction during the thousand years when the discipline is taught by Christ through the election, whereby they can stand against Satan after the thousand years are finished, taking part in the second resurrection into eternal life and going into the third world age, and then shall we all ever be with the Lord. The righteous man wisely considereth the house of the wicked, but God overthroweth the wicked for their wickedness. This word house in the Hebrew means a house in the greatest variety of applications, especially a family, as in Satan's family tree. The Kenites are the natural branches, but most Christians at the sixth trumpet will be grafted onto Satan's family tree, and if they choose to stay that way and follow Satan after the thousand years are finished, they will be blotted out in the lake of fire. Everyone who remains in Christ, the tree of life, goes into the eternity. Verse 13, Whoso stoppeth his ears at the cry of the poor, he also shall cry himself, but shall not be heard. And another time we see that Hebrew word translated as poor here is in Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 4 where it says, Therefore I said, Surely these are poor, they are foolish, for they know not the way of the Lord, nor the judgment of their God. And again, the rapacity of the wicked shall destroy them because they refuse to do judgment. They don't know how to because they're biblically illiterate. I will get me unto the great men, the elders of the church in other words, the pastors, and will speak unto them, for they have known the way of the Lord and the judgment of their God. Notice the past tense there, but these have all together, the pastors and their flocks, broken the yoke and burst the bonds. They joined up with Satan against the Lord and against the true Christ, saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us, as it's written in Psalm 2. Wherefore, a lion out of the forest shall slay them spiritually, Satan being the false lion of false Judah, and a wolf of the evening shall spoil them. Remember those false prophets who inwardly are ravening, that is to say, rapacious wolves pushing the any moment now flyaway doctrine, Satan in his role of Antichrist being the false prophet, a leopard shall watch over their cities, the Kenites and their four dynasties, everyone that goeth out thence shall be torn in pieces because their transgressions are many and their backslidings are increased. And as you can see pointed out in the companion Bible, backslidings means apostasies as in the great apostasy at the sixth trumpet. A gift in secret pacifieth anger and a bribe, not a reward, but a bribe in the bosom, strong wrath. This word strong is the same as fierce in Daniel chapter 8 verse 23 where Satan is called a king of fierce countenance. So the positive in this verse is a gift in secret because as Christ says in Matthew chapter 6, when thou doest alms, which means giving to the poor, do it secretly, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. He's not going to be angry with those who stick to his word verse by verse. The negative in this verse then is a bribe in the bosom when Antichrist uses his one world system's money to bribe the world to worship him instead of Christ. Again, this word strong is the same word as fierce in Daniel chapter 8 verse 23. Satan there is called a king of fierce countenance. And in Daniel chapter 8 verse 25, as you can see, by peace Satan shall destroy many. By their prosperity or careless security, Satan's wrath is against those who know who he is and stand against him who refuse to participate in his 
one world whorehouse. Verse 15, it is joy to the just to do judgment, but destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. Many will approach Christ upon his return, saying, We have eaten and drunk in thy presence, and thou hast taught in our streets, because they will have thought Satan was Jesus. But Christ will say to them, I know ye not whence ye are. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. They won't take part in the first resurrection into eternal life, and they will be destroyed after the thousand years are finished, unless they stand against Satan at that time and take part in the second resurrection, whereby they can go into the eternity. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. And this word dead is raphium in the Hebrew, the offspring of the fallen angels. Those who wander away from God's word will end up in Satan's congregation whenever he appears as the false Christ, the congregation or the church of the dead along with Satan's angels in the fourth and final stage of the locust army, the consumer stage. He that loveth pleasure shall be a poor man, spiritually speaking. Those who believed not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness that you can read of in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. They'll take part in the great apostasy that they might be damned, but they can still stand against Satan after the millennium and take part in the second resurrection if they so choose. He that loveth wine and oil shall not be rich. The wine of fornication, that is to say, with the oil being symbolic of the false anointed one, those who are deceived will worship instead of the true Messiah. Christ means the anointed one, Messiah in the Hebrew, but for every positive there's a negative. There is a false Christ and it's Satan himself, and most Christians will lose their virginity, spiritually speaking, and become the whore of Babylon, which means confusion, which is why Christ says in Mark 13, woe to those that are with child and to them that give suck. If you're with child, that means you're not a virgin anymore. You've been impregnated with Satan's deception in your forehead. Giving suck is the same analogy as in their right hand. It means they'll be doing Satan's work for his church because they'll think he's Jesus, becoming the workers of iniquity. And upon his return, the true Christ will say to them, depart from me. Verse 18, the wicked shall be a ransom for the righteous and the transgressor for the upright. And as God the Father says to God the Son in Psalm 2, Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance. And as it's written in Revelation chapter 19, beginning with verse 11, And I saw heaven open, this is at the seventh trumpet, and behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, the true Christ. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And as we saw in Psalm 2, thou shalt break them with a rod of iron, break meaning to rule or govern, when the true Christ returns as King of kings and Lord of lords at the seventh trumpet. It is better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and angry woman. And you could even see this contentious and angry woman as the whore of Babylon in the futurist sense, the contention and anger being against those standing against Satan's church during the sixth trumpet. The whore of Babylon, which means confusion, being the zur in the Hebrew, which means an apostate, the strange woman we read of back in Proverbs chapter 7. There is treasure to be desired and oil in the dwelling of the wise, but a foolish man spendeth it up. And the opposite of the whore of Babylon is the virgin bride of Christ, who waits for the true husband, having enough oil in her lamp, which is symbolic of the truth of God's word, in your forehead, whereby you're not deceived, as you can read of in the first parable of Matthew chapter 25. He that followeth after righteousness and mercy, that's loving kindness, findeth life, righteousness, and honor, eternal life, that is to say, with Christ saying, well done, thou good and faithful servant, as it's written in the second parable of Matthew chapter 25, as opposed to being called a wicked and slothful servant and being cast into the outer darkness. You don't want that, so stay in the word and plant those seeds of truth every chance you get. Verse 22, a wise man scaleth the city of the mighty and casteth down the strength of the confidence thereof. Ultimately, that great city Babylon, which means confusion, meaning if you're armed with God's truth, you can't be sucked into Babylon by the deception, and those delivered up during the sixth trumpet will allow the Holy Spirit to speak through them, bringing many out of confusion, which is what Babylon means, and when the true Christ returns, that great city Babylon will be destroyed forever and ever. Verse 
Verse 23, whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from troubles. And this word troubles can mean tribulation, and this verse can even apply to the delivering up to Antichrist when you're not to premeditate what you will say, but are to allow the Holy Spirit to speak through you if you're delivered up. This would be keeping, which means guarding your mouth and your tongue, and if you know the real truth, you're kept from the hour of temptation, meaning you won't be tempted with Satan's attempted bribery whenever he appears as the false Christ. Remember how Satan attempted to bribe Christ into worshiping him instead of the Father, he'll do the same thing to the Christians of the world and by peace shall destroy many by their prosperity or careless security, as you can see pointed out in the Companion Bible, but not those who remain virgins, spiritually speaking, having enough oil in their lamp, which means truth in their mind, whereby they're not deceived. Proud and haughty scorner is his name, the scorner being Satan, a king over all the children of pride, as we know from the book of Job who dealeth in proud wrath. And remember back in verse 14, we saw the strong wrath, the same word as fierce, in Daniel chapter 8, verse 23. Proverbs 21, 14, having to do with the bribery during the sixth trumpet. Proud and haughty, scorner is his name, who dealeth in proud wrath. That's the reason Satan fell in the first place, all the way back in the first world age, pride within himself. And as it's written in Revelation chapter 12, verse 12, after Satan and his angels are cast to earth, Earth, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. The sea, because at the woe of the fifth trumpet, the first beast rises up out of the sea, and Satan, the dragon, gives him his power and his seat and great authority. The second beast rises up out of the earth at the woe of the sixth trumpet, which is when Satan appears as Antichrist. So woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth he hath but a short time. Five months, as we know from Revelation chapter chapter 9, and his angels, the locust army, will be cast out with him at the woe of the fifth trumpet. He doesn't appear as Antichrist until the woe of the sixth trumpet. The desire of the slothful killeth him, for his hands refuseth to labor. Again, look what happens to the wicked and slothful servant who didn't spread the truth he was given in Matthew chapter 25, in the second parable in that chapter. See to it that doesn't end up being you. Get to work, plant seeds, spread the truth of God's word. He coveteth greedily all day long, always wanting because God isn't blessing him because he won't work. But the righteous giveth and spareth not. The good and faithful servants written of in Matthew chapter 25 in the second parable in that chapter, the sacrifice of the wicked is abomination. How much more when he bringeth it with a wicked mind? And Cain, who was of that wicked one, is what this should remind you of. The Kenites in this final generation teaching people their wicked ways through their four hidden dynasties. That's why we we're supposed to know what that word count means in Revelation 13, 18, whereby we understand who the Kenites are, and from enumerating those stones worn smooth, you come to the conclusion that they're from the false rock, the king of Tyrus, which means rock, as he's called in Ezekiel 28, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. That's who the false Christ is, and he'll appear in Jerusalem at the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial, having two horns like a lamb, impersonating Jesus, that is to say, and he'll speak as a dragon, because he is the dragon, Satan himself, claiming to be Jesus. At 666, verse 28, a false witness shall perish, the false witness being Satan, who is the son of perdition, shall perish along with whoever follows him after the thousand years are finished. But the man that heareth speaketh constantly, speaketh the truth evermore, in other words, as you can see pointed out in the Companion Bible. In other words, he's going into the eternity, not the lake of fire. Verse 29, a wicked man and hardeneth his face from turning from the crooked path of Satan and repenting. But as for the upright, he directeth his way, because the upright will always ask our Heavenly Father to lead, guide, and direct him or her in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 30, there is no wisdom, nor understanding, nor counsel against the Lord. And again, in Psalm 2, we see the kings of the earth set themselves, which means take their stand, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, the true Christ, saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. And you can find out how that turns out in Ezekiel 38 and 39, as well as Revelation chapter 19. That's when the true Christ returns at the seventh trumpet and the battles of Armageddon and Haman Gog transpire. That's when those hailstones you can also read of at the end of Revelation chapter 16, when the seventh vial is poured out. And you can also read of those hailstones in Ezekiel 13, where God says he is against those that 
teach his people to fly to save their souls, those hailstones fall upon those who are against the true Christ. And that's when Satan's role of Antichrist and his one world system, including his fallen angels, are destroyed, as you can see in Revelation chapter 19, verse 20. That's Daniel's fourth beast being destroyed, and then in Revelation 19, 21, we see what happens to those who made up the lion, the bear, and the leopard of Daniel chapter 7. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, the true Christ, at the seventh trumpet, the last trump, when all are changed into spiritual bodies, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. And as it's written in Daniel chapter 7, they had their dominion taken away, the lion, the bear, and the leopard. No more one world government, in other words, but their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. The time is the millennium, and the season is that little season you can read of in Revelation chapter 20, when Satan is released, and whoever follows him then will be blotted out in the lake of fire. The horse is prepared against the day of battle, but safety, that is to say salvation, is of the Lord. Jesus being translated means Yahweh's Savior, and he that endureth unto the end, the same shall be saved.